first two episodes of The Acolyte Show have officially premiered, and here is my quick review on it. Just a heads up, there are going to be some spoilers in this video, so if you have not seen the first two episodes of The Acolyte on Disney+, Plus, go ahead and go watch those, enjoy them, and come back to this video if you so choose once you have done so. So I'm going to start off with my kind of overall review of the first two episodes combined, and then I will kind of go into some deeper details on what I liked about each episode. But overall, I think this is a very solid start to this new series. These first two episodes were a really good hook. I even watched this with somebody who isn't really the biggest fan of Star Wars, and even they were like, whoa, I need, I need more episodes. I really like this. And I felt the same way. I felt the story, kind of the intrigue of this murder mystery, these new characters and this new time period were interesting enough on their own to lead these first two episodes. And that's not even mentioning, you know, the choreography, the cool little Easter eggs to the prequels, the costumes, everything along those lines as well. I also personally think the acting was very good. I've seen a lot of people kind of be iffy about this. I thought that the girl who plays Osha and also May did an amazing job. She has some really good depth to her acting range, especially playing two different characters on two separate sides of the story. You really see her range and delivery there. Also, Soul. I was a little worried about this character because outside of Squid Games, I didn't really know much about this actor. But man, he honestly stole the show. Every time he came back on screen, I was really excited to see what he had to say. He seems like a very wise Jedi Master character who has a lot of history behind him. And I really hope we kind of learn some more about him in these next few episodes and maybe in future projects as well. But yeah, overall, I was very impressed with these first two episodes. I liked that we were lied to and we didn't get 30-minute episodes. Each episode was around... 40 minutes, you know, give and take some credits, but I felt like the episodes were long enough to do what they needed to do, but also not too long, of course. I feel like the world was set up really well, this story was set up really well, the villain and all the other characters were set up amazingly. We even kind of got the grander scale of the galaxy visiting a second Jedi temple, which I thought was really cool because we haven't seen that in live-action Star Wars yet. I don't think we've even really heard a mention of other Jedi temples. I believe the first time we have gotten a mention or seen another Jedi temple within the galaxy and having them visit it and kind of get the perspective of, wow, we didn't think Coruscant would want to make their way here kind of puts into perspective, you know, the reputation that Coruscant has, the reputation that those Jedi in that area have, and even a lot of people you know, extras in these first two episodes, giving their perspective on the Jedi at the time, they really are seen as kind of the police of the galaxy, which is exactly as the Jedi are touted to be throughout the Star Wars universe. We've just really never seen that as as soon as we see them in the prequels, they kind of just turn into war generals overnight and leave that life of peacekeeping behind them, eventually leading to their fall and the rise of the Empire, of course. But yeah, again, amazing first two episodes. I'm really excited to see what comes next. I feel like they've set up this series to be really good going forwards, and I hope they continue on this path because there's been a lot of shows where we get a lot of unanswered questions, we're kind of left in the dust, and I feel like this one, as it goes along, is answering its own questions that it's setting up for itself. So I hope that trend continues and we keep that same consistent quality throughout. If so, this might end up being one of my favorite pieces of Star Wars media. I don't want to speak too soon because I have heard a couple of crazy rumors about the upcoming episodes that may sway my opinion, but I'm just going to kind of get those out of my head and move forward and hope the best for this series because I truly enjoyed the first two episodes. I would probably give episode one a solid nine out of ten and maybe episode two a mm, eight to eight point five out of ten and if you haven't gotten around to watching the first two episodes of the acolyte yet i highly suggest it go into it with an open mind know that this is a new era know that this is a new story that they're trying to set up and there's a lot of new characters that they have to set up and just pay attention to the story beats and just enjoy yourself allow yourself to get lost in this galaxy and i think you will like it as much as i did now going into some more depth on the things that i really liked specifically let's just start at the beginning of episode one 
I thought the quote-unquote crawl was really cool. We didn't get a crawl. We kind of just got a intro paragraph that let us know what was going on in the galaxy, what time period this is set in, and it was done kind of in a filmic fashion, if you know what I mean. It looked a little more older Hollywood style, which I really liked because this, of course, is set before the prequels, so it should have a different vibe, maybe even feel a little bit older as it does come before everything we have come to know and love from the Star Wars universe. Next, I just want to say the twist, although it was a little gimmicky, this is a tactic used in Hollywood a lot, you know, the evil twin or the evil brother or sister family member, and it's revealed that it's been them all along. That has kind of been played out in Hollywood, but the way this was done through kind of these, I don't know if those were force visions, hallucinations, a dream. Either way, I really enjoyed that twist because from the rumored plot, we did know that there was some sister dynamic to this, but I did not expect that at all. And I thought the way it happened was really, it kind of put all the pieces together for you. Even 10 minutes after the reveal, I looked at the person I was watching it with and I said, oh, that's why she couldn't use the force in the prisoner ship. It's because she literally doesn't have the force. That was her sister. Because when she couldn't use the force in the prison cell, I honestly was like, oh, yep, here, here comes the downward spiral of this show because she can kill a Jedi Master basically with her force powers and knives. But she can't pick up her little cauterizing droid or whatever the hell that thing is to escape a burning ship. And then it clicked. I'm like, oh... Well, you know, that puts that scene into perspective a little bit, which is really cool when a show or a movie makes you go back to past events and puts it in a different light, which I thought was really tasteful. This was really well done. I was kind of, I was very impressed with this. Not even kind of, I was very impressed with that story beat. It really made me intrigued for what was to come next. And honestly, maybe even made me think like, wow, okay, like, this is new for Star Wars. I really like this, which is something that I unfortunately have not felt in quite some time. Next, again, I really liked the new characters. They are each kind of compelling in their own ways. There seems that there will be a lot of Jedi in this series, which I am not one to complain about. The more lightsabers, the better. It is impressive, however, how they have put so many characters in front of our face already, new characters at that, and I find myself kind of already caring and liking quirks of each one of them. As I said, Soul is this kind of Mace Windu-esque wise Jedi Master. You have the other Jedi Knight. I unfortunately don't remember his name, but I remember him having kind of similar facial features to Hayden Christensen, which I thought was kind of funny. He is kind of this unlevel headed just now became a Jedi Knight. He's really weary about this situation. He's always on guard, but at the end of the day, Outside of all his antics, he comes in with the heroics. This Padawan, she seems very wise as well at a young age, piloting this ship, putting May under arrest, or trying to put her under arrest. And I don't know, every character seems to bring their own little quirks, like I said, and just in these short first two episodes, I really got a good feel for them and really like these characters. I think they're pretty compelling, and although I think they all are probably going to meet a very untimely death by the end of this series, I'm riding with them until that, and I just think uh, this whole world that has been set up is pretty cool. Other than that, obviously, the fight scenes were pretty cool. I like kind of the martial arts or samurai style of fighting that it even seems like Saul knows. I don't know if he taught May that, and that's how she's kind of well-versed in that. I'm very curious to see if this is kind of the norm for the Jedi at the time, being able to do this more physical style of fighting. It sounds like they don't really pull their lightsabers unless they intend to harm, which is kind of seen in the Skywalker saga, but also not. It kind of sounds like this is a new take on what a Jedi does with their weapon and how they should treat it, how they should fight in a confrontation like May versus Soul. And again, that choreography I thought was really good. Great camera movements, no shaky cam. It stayed on the characters and their movements and the consequences of those movements. When blows landed, the force was used, felt like you were right there in the action. And it, this was some action that we've never really seen in Star Wars before. We don't get that hand-on-hand -hand combat too much. So this was pretty interesting to see. Also, just the cinematography overall, I can kind of tell where a big chunk of that $180 million budget went. Obviously, some choreography and costumes, but also the picture quality, I think, was amazing. I watched it on my 4K TV, 
and it looks very crisp, very nice, but also keeping the practical effects vibe, which I really liked. This is probably, outside of The Mandalorian, some of the closest I think I've felt to what Star Wars used to feel like, if you know what I mean, that vibe of kind of one through six. And The Mandalorian captured that really well, and I think Acolyte did as well, at least in the first two episodes, with the set pieces, the camera movements, everything. It did feel like George Lucas Star Wars in a way. And again, this is one of those things that I hope stays consistent throughout the series. I'm sure it will, but it really felt like Star Wars to me, which is the most important thing when making a Star Wars project, and I really appreciated that as well. Also, this new dark side user sounds pretty creepy. I don't know what his or her story is going to be, but I hope we figure it out soon and they don't drag it for a few episodes and then don't give them enough time to develop. I'm really curious who this person is, why they have decided to train May, and what the result of this is going to be. Very excited for next episode. Those are my overall thoughts on the first two episodes. Yeah, a solid 8.5 to 9 out of 10 for those first two episodes. Really excited to see what comes next, and I hope you guys are as well. I am done with my review for the first two episodes. I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. Make sure to leave some for me, and we will get into some good discussion in the comments in the coming days. Also, while you're at it, make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.